Good evening and welcome to our week nine regular season finale edition of SSN Game Day. I'm your host, Adam Hipsky, joined alongside my panel of analysts, Dominic Cecilia, Davis Garrig, and Davis Brown. A great week nine slate we have on tap for you all tonight, Headline by two top four matchups between HSC and Brownsburg, as well as Cathedral and Center Grove. However, first, we got to break down week eight for you guys. We'll start with Carmel and Warren, kind of a game we thought was going to go Carmel's way. Warren with a surprise there. Yeah, that one's very surprising to see Warren taking that win. I did not think that would happen. We've seen this Warren team be very up and down. You see games like Lawrence Central where they got absolutely dominated, didn't have a shot at winning that game. And then you also see games like this where they're pulling off wins against great teams like Carmel and also King out of Detroit. So you just really know, don't know what's going on with this team going into the playoffs. Yeah, agreed. I think they've been very inconsistent team. Beating Carmel is the first step on their road in this state tournament coming up in a few weeks. But you know, they've they've really started to try to prove themselves. You know, some games they haven't been up to par or what they look like, but I think they're a lot better of a team than what most people think. Yeah, I think uh Warren kind of surprised me and it kind of like replenished my hope in them cuz uh last week they had a tough loss to Lawrence North. And, um, I mean, earlier in the season they looked really good, and at times they've looked shaky, but I think this win against Carmel, a uh, top-10 team, really strong program, will solidify them as a contender to do some things in the state tournament. Yeah, Warren Central, a tough start to the year with a brutal schedule. However, getting that signature win against Carmel I think will do a lot for them heading into the tournament. And staying in the mick uh, from that Warren Central win, Lawrence Central, Ben Davis. Ben Davis has looked the part all year. However, Lawrence Central coming off that week one loss to HSC. Lawrence Central has had a solid season. Ben Davis beat them 29-28. Thoughts on that one in the mick? Yeah, I think that game, that was really dominated by Lawrence Central at the start. They were up 28-0, and then Ben Davis was able to come back and score 29 unanswered points. That Ben Davis team is really dangerous with Thomas Gotkowski, one of the best junior quarterbacks in the state. I would really watch out for them. You saw they draw at Brownsburg in the first round of sectionals. That's going to be a really great matchup. Both of those teams have looked solid. Yeah, agreed. Ben Davis, you know... As Lawrence Central, you can't give up 29 unanswered points. Being up 28-0 to and losing that game just hurts you as a team in the locker room. That hurts. Um, but they, they played fairly well up until that part. Um, again, like you mentioned, Ben Davis draws Brownsburg in the sectional in first round. I think that game is going to be interesting to watch. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, and I think... Um I think LC looked like a top defense for the first half of that game, and then they just kind of like imploded on themselves. And I mean, Ben Davis is a really good team too. Obviously, credit to them for that. And I think Ben Davis showed that they have that uh, kind of that playoff DNA, I'd say, because they uh, they didn't get the, they might have been out of it. They might have thought they were out of it, but they 29 on answer. That kind of speaks for itself. And we'll move to the HEC. One team we'll see behind us here tonight, Brownsburg, Noblesville. Brownsburg's offense on a roll. However, their defense struggled against that wing T offense of Noblesville. 45-28, Brownsburg. Thoughts on how that affects their, their game tonight here against the Royals? Yeah, I think that's something you definitely got to take a note of. Um, HSC beat, beat Noblesville by a lot more than Brownsburg did. Also, giving up 28 points to that Noblesville offense. That's an offense that's been shut down by almost every team they've played this year, a lot of teams. And to see this Brownsburg defense that a lot of people thought was really, really great give up 28 points, it's just a big question mark going into tonight. Yeah, agreed. 28 points to Noblesville is not what you're looking for. You know, their offense really hasn't done much this season with that wing T offense. It's just a very slow-paced game. Brownsburg being able to score 45 points, though, is interesting to me because, again, Noblesville takes up majority of the clock with that run offense but again their defense didn't surprise it didn't look very good this week their offense though was excellent 45 28 brownsburg i mean i i don't think i can take any anything away from brownsburg in this one because they they won by a margin and um i mean they've won by mostly double digit points all year except for a few games but um i still think this raises a couple questions about their defense moving on 
to the team that we'll see playing Brownsburg here tonight, HSC. HSC, a dominating win against Franklin Central on the road. Their last test before Brownsburg takeaways from that one. Yeah, yeah Franklin Central is a team that you really – we've seen HSC have problems against in years before, but HSC handled that one. I don't think it was a game at any point. HSC's defense holding them to 14 points is really establishing itself as one of the best in the state. Yeah, the thing that surprised me in that game is HSC really dominated the run game. Obviously, the receiver Donovan Hamilton started it off with a touchdown, but after that, it was all running backs with Jalen Alexander and AZ Wallace really scoring the touchdowns for them. 38-14, to 14, that defense is looking for something. They're hungry. Yeah, I think it was just kind of an exclamation mark on their uh, great season so far and uh, just utter domination. Franklin Central was never in it, and I think it'll be a good competition uh, against Brownsburg here tonight. Staying in the HUC, Fishers, a team that Hamilton Southeastern is likely to face in the sectional championship of that sectional three, uh, faced off at home against Westfield. Westfield looking solid here down the stretch, defeated Fishers 28-17. Yeah, that was a really good game for Westfield. Kendall Garnett played really well. The Westfield defense played really well. It was pretty much a game that was dominated by Westfield from the start. I feel like the score makes it look a lot closer than it was. And I'd look out for that Westfield team going into the sectionals, taking on Carmel. Yeah, agreed. I think Westfield's going to be a good-looking team going into the sectional. As for Fishers, you know, their run game is still one of the top in, in the HCC as long as as well as the state with Kobe Martin and Carson Don. Those two running backs have really dominated teams this year, and I just won't look to see them through the state finals. Yep. Yeah, I think this is a really strong win for Westfield. I mean, that was the statement. Fisher's obviously top ten opponent. They've been struggling the past few weeks. Obviously, they went close against Franklin Central, and now Westfield gets a statement win against Fishers and I think they've kind of went under the radar this season and I think they'll be uh, I think they'll make it a game with Carmel. Yep. Cathedral will see them tonight on the road against their Grove. However, week 8, one of their bigger tests they've had this year. They looked the part 42-21 win against Brebuff. Yeah, that was a very that was a very dominant win for Cathedral. Um, for Buff is a great rivalry for them, and we see that game get a lot closer than it should sometimes, but Cathedral able to take care of business last week. Yeah, Cathedral's defense is looking like one of the best in the state. Maverick Geske from Brebuff throwing five picks is not something you want to see from their offense, but credit to the Cathedral defense for really putting the pressure on them, getting in the backfield and forcing them to throw bad throws. Yeah, I think Cathedral had a pretty comfortable one with this one, and they, they kind of showed why they're not just marginal over other teams that are of this caliber. Yep. Moving on into week nine, obviously no game picks yet, but we'll start with Fishers and Zionsville. Thought on that one this evening. Yeah, I think this is a great bounce back game for Fishers. It has the potential to be a great bounce back for both teams, but Zionsville, after that HSC game, we've seen them on a very downward slope, losing to Avon, getting absolutely destroyed by Brownsburg. And Fishers isn't doing too great either right now, coming off a bad loss to Westfield. But I think Fishers is the better team, and I think we might see that in that game. Yeah, agreed. Zionsville, after losing to HSC, just hasn't been the same team as we saw them early in the season. Avon just putting a beating on them. This Fishers-Zionsville game, though, is a matchup I'm looking forward to with that receiver core of Eugene Hilton, you know, and then the running backs from Fishers. This game's going to be very important for both teams to get a win, one of them heading into the sectional. Yeah, I think uh, it's important for both teams equally. Obviously, they both need to bounce back, and I think a win for either team here would really help their confidence going into sectionals, especially Fishers. But Zionsville has been on the wrong side of a couple ones after HSE, so I'm uh, I'm interested to see how this one goes. Also worth noting, that is a game that went into double overtime last year, so keep an eye out for that to happen, possibly again. Two teams on completely different trajectories. Westfield on the way up, Franklin Central coming off a 38-14 loss. Westfield will host their regular season finale. Thoughts on that one? Yeah, Westfield's looked great. Um, after that HSE loss, they've looked really, really good. They had a quick hiccup with Brownsburg, but even in that game, leading at halftime, they've looked really solid since the HSE game. Yeah, agreed. Westfield is looking like a very solid team headed in to this game, not only this game, but the state tournament run. You know, again, like you mentioned, after losing to HSC, they haven't had many hiccups other than Brownsburg, but Brownsburg is a very tough team to play, and you do not want to play them. Nonetheless, also Franklin Central 
has not looked like the same team that I thought they were going to be coming into this season. So this game is going to be very interesting. Yeah, I think um, I think this is a confidence game for Westfield too. Obviously, they play Carmel in the first round of sectionals, so I think going into this one with a comfortable win, not a nail biter, even just winning by double digit points will really um, get some momentum for these guys. Two teams with. You know, not the ideal week eight. Carmel with the upset loss to Warren, and then you talk about LC giving up 29 unanswered and that loss to Ben Davis. You know, Lawrence Central still searching for that signature win. Carmel hosts that one tonight. This is a game that I really have no clue what's going to happen. We've seen LC's defense be dominant at times, and we we're calling them one of the best in the state. They do have multiple D1 recruits and commits, but we also see them go out against a team like Center Grove, and they give up 63 points. So we could see that happen. We also could see a low-scoring affair, which we have seen multiple times, like their game against Lawrence North. But this Carmel team coming off a loss that they probably should not have lost, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I think coming into the season, we thought Lawrence Central's defense, after giving up 12 points to the Royals, were going to be a lot better of a defense than they've looked like in the past couple weeks. And, you know, giving up 29 unanswered is not something that you're looking for from a defense. Carmel's offense, obviously pretty good, didn't show up very much last week. But I think this is going to be a defensive versus offensive battle. Yeah. Starting with that second half last week, LC gave up 29 unanswered, which is demoralizing for any any defense. So I'm interested to see how they react to a strong Carmel offense and if this one will be close or if Carmel will take it away early. Yeah. Moving on, a top four matchup we'll see tonight. Cathedral at Center Grove. That one went Center Grove's way last year. Two teams, obviously Cathedral, back-to-back 5A state champions. Center Grove, back-to-back 6A state champions. Now Cathedral moved up to 6A. Could be a possible matchup we see in the playoffs. However, we'll see him tonight at Center Grove. Yeah, last year this was one of the most hyped up matchups in it, in Indiana high school football history, possibly the most hyped up. And it's just as good of a matchup this year. A little bit of the hype getting taken away for that HSC Brownsburg matchup. But it's still going to be a fantastic matchup between Cathedral's defense and Center Grove's offense, as well as their other units on those teams are also very solid. Yeah, last year it was an extremely low scoring f affair between these two teams. I look for more of the same this year as both these defenses are excellent defenses and they don't give up too many points. I'm looking for the same defensive battle this year and this game is going to be really fun to watch. I honestly don't think I can predict this one because both of these teams have been very uh, inconsistent. I'd say not bad, but their offenses and Center Grove's defense has looked a little shaky this season, but their offense has been very strong, along with Cathedral's offense has looked great, and sometimes their defense gets a little shaky. So um, I think this one will be a low-scoring game, like you said, Davis. Hamilton Southeastern, Brownsburg, HCC title on the line. Both teams coming into this one at 8-0. HSC hasn't had too tough of a test. Brownsburg's picked up that big win against Cathedral. Thoughts on that one? We'll see it here tonight, 7 o'clock, live on SSN. So we already saw earlier in the year the great hype around the Mudsock game. Brought in over 11,000 fans to this stadium right here. I think it's going to be pretty similar. A lot of people will be at this one as it's number one in the state versus number two in the state in the Max Preps Bowl. Yeah, Brownsburg about 45 minutes away from Fishers, Indiana. But I do think being number one versus a top five matchup, I think they'll travel well. And I think this is going to be very fun atmosphere, and it's going to be good for the fans to get this game out. And I'm excited. Yeah, I'm very excited too for this one. Obviously, uh, HSE is amongst one of the best defenses in the state. Their offense isn't far behind. And uh, I think Brownsburg has one of the best offenses in the state, and they have a strong defense too. I think this will be a close game, and uh, I'm really excited for this one tonight. Yeah, a lot of pressure on both teams. Chance to, to take home a conference championship. That'll do it for our Week 9 preview. We'll send it to our analyst, Alex Boothby, for Boothby's board. Regular season finale. We'll be right back with our game picks here on SSM Game Day. Hello, I'm Alex Boothby, and welcome to Boothby's Board. I'm a football player here at HSC, and here are my top three games from this week. First up, Carmel versus Lawrence Central. Um, Carmel last week losing a tough game to Warren Central. Warren, one of those teams that's dangerous but doesn't quite have many of those quote-unquote good wins yet. While Lawrence Central uh, going up 28-0 into half against Ben Davis last week, but then in the second half, Ben Davis going 29 unanswered points. That was a big loss to Lawrence Central, losing by one. 
This game, I think it could be a tough game. Both defenses are solid. Star-studded will help Joshua Mickens, um, both edge rushers on those teams. Um, Carmel's offense, though, I feel is more explosive than Lawrence Central's respawn. Has been a dog all year long, um, making explosive plays, returning kickoffs for touchdowns. I think Carmel will outpace Lawrence Central's offense in this game. I have Carmel minus seven. Next up, Avon versus Noblesville. These are two teams that have not had the year that they've wanted to have. Noblesville running a wing T offense, chewing clock, cutting some close games with some good teams like Westfield only losing by one. Meanwhile, Avon, very different offensive style, slinging the ball around, Mason Reynolds at quarterback. Um, they like to throw it deep. They like to make explosive plays. And they're coming off a big win against Zionsville to really build up some momentum heading into week nine of regular season and sectionals. Um, however, Avon's defense has struggled in some games, especially against the run, especially in the interior. And Noblesville's O-line could really take advantage of that situation. I have Noblesville minus seven. Now, my game of the week, it's number two versus number four, Cathedral versus Center Grove. Center Grove, very explosive offense, while Cathedral has a star-studded defense. I think the, both of these teams are very good. Look to see them deep into the postseason. But I think Center Grove is just too explosive for this Cathedral team to get up with. Now, don't get me wrong. Cathedral could make some big plays. You know, Danny O'Neill at quarterback, he is a playmaker. He is a very good quarterback. But I see Center Grove, you know, taking advantage of some of the gaps on Cathedral's defense, while there's not many. I see Center Grove taking advantage of some. Uh, Center Grove, minus three. That's it for me here at Boothby's board. Back to Adam at the desk. Thank you, Alex Boothby, for this week's edition of Boothby's board. On to our game picks. We'll start in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference, Fishers and Zionsville. We'll start with you, Dom. Yeah, I think Fishers is going to win this one. Zionsville has got to be down on themselves right now after being the first team to lose to Avon on the air. I'm liking Fishers to win this one 24-7. I think Fishers is going to dominate this game with the run offense. Like I've mentioned before, these two running backs for Fishers have really dominated everyone this year. I look for this to be a blowout win. I think it's going to be 31-7. to seven. Yeah, I think Fishers is going to take advantage of this um, depleted Zionsville front, and I think they're going to run all over them, and I think they'll win by double digits tonight. I think Fishers has two opportunities. I think they're going to look ahead after the sectional draw to sectionals, that possible rematch in the sectional championship with Hamlin and Southeastern. I think they're going to look at this game as a chance to build momentum while they're looking ahead. I think Zionsville is going to catch them off guard. I'm going to take Zionsville in an upset 24-17. Staying in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference, we talked about two different teams going on two different paths. Westfield, Franklin Central. Yeah, I'm really liking Westfield in this one to win by a lot. I'm going to take Westfield 45-14. I'd take a look on their senior quarterback, Cole Ballard, to have a great game passing as well as running. Yeah, I agree. I think Westfield's going to dominate this game, and there's not much you can say about it. Franklin Central just hasn't been a great team, so I'm going to go, like you said, 45-14 Westfield. I'm going to take Westfield in this one 35-7. I think Westfield's better on all sides of the ball, and I think this one will be easy for them. Yeah, I think the talent of Westfield just completely overmatches Franklin Central. I think Franklin Central is going to be on the way up here in the next couple of years. But tonight, I'm going to take Westfield 42-14. Moving on, one last game before we get into our two top four matchups. Lawrence Central, Carmel. We talked about two teams looking to bounce back from an absolute horrid week eight. Yeah, I feel like this is a game that most people will look at and just say, oh, Carmel's going to win that one. But Lawrence Central has a great defense and an offense that can put up points when they need to. I'm going to take Carmel in this one, though, but I think it's going to stay really close. 35-31, Carmel. Adam, you took an upset earlier. This is going to be my upset game of the week. I think Lawrence Central is going to take this game looking to build momentum, headed into sectionals, and I think they're going to play their hearts out and really beat this Carmel team, but it'll be close. I think it's going to be 35-31 to 31, Lawrence Central. Um, I'm going to take Carmel in this one. I think I don't think Carmel will lose two in a row here, and I think they'll bounce back, and I think they'll win this one 28-21. It'll still be a close game because Lawrence Central's a very good team. 
A defensive battle, Lawrence Central's offense is on a roll. The defense heading the other direction. I think Carmel bounces back. I don't think Carmel can lose two in a row, especially going into sectionals. They've got a big round one opponent with Westfield. I'm going to take Carmel 24-7 to in this one. Lawrence Central's offense, I think, stays struggling tonight. Heading into the top four matchup, Cathedral at Center Grove. Center Grove won this matchup a year ago in a number one versus number two. Something similar here tonight, top four. However, Cathedral, first year in 6A, they're trying to solidify themselves as a contender at the top of the 6A bracket. Thoughts on that one, Cathedral at Center Grove this evening. Both teams with one loss on the year against very great teams. Center Grove, we saw them going into that Trinity game with a 30-game winning streak, and they now have over 30, an over 30-game winning streak against in-state opponents. I think tonight's the night that that's going to be snapped. Cathedral has one of the best defensive lines in the state and a great offense with Danny O'Neill. I'm liking Cathedral to win this one in a low-scoring game, 21-17. Wow. Again, last year, this game was a very low-scoring battle going Center Grove's way. And this year, I think it's going to be more of the same. I think Center Grove is going to win this one 14 to 10. Uh, I'm going to take Cathedral in this one with Dom. Um, I think Cathedral's defense is just good enough to get them out of this. And um, I think Center Grove's defense has looked kind of shaky the past few weeks. And I think Cathedral will get this one in a sort of low scoring battle. I'm going to say 24 to 14. I'm going to split it 2 to 2. I'm going to take Center Grove in this one. However, can Center Grove put up enough points and score on that Cathedral defense? I think it's the question. I, I think that they will. I think the experience of Center Grove will outlast Cathedral. However, these two teams play again in the tournament. I could see it going a different way. However, I'm going to take Center Grove to their coaching and their experience tonight. Game of the week. We'll see it here tonight. 7 o'clock. 8-0 versus 8-0. Who will go and finish their regular season undefeated? Hoosier Crossroad Conference title on the line. Davis. Me and Davis Garrig on the call tonight. Davis Brown, score prediction for this evening's battle. I think this one will definitely be close. Uh, I think HSC has a very strong defense, and I think Brownsburg has an explosive offense. So I think this one will be HSC 21, Brownsburg 17. I'm taking the Royals. Yeah, Brownsburg has a great offense. They can really pass and run the ball. They have Garrett Sherrill, one of the best running backs in the state, as well as Jaden Whitaker, one of the best quarterbacks in the state. But that HSE defense, I mentioned how Cathedral had one of the best defensive lines in the state. I think the reason they're one of the best is because of that front seven that HSE has. I think they are the best in the state. So for this game, give me the Royals 24 to 20. And that'll do it for our regular season finale of SSN Game Day. See you tonight. 8 0 versus 8 0. Who's your crossroad conference? Title on the line. Hamilton and Southeastern Brownsburg will be back. Kickoff coming up next on Southeastern Sports Network. With fall sports wrapping up, here's a look at some of our other sports. We start off with girls golf. The girls golf season wrapped up with five athletes competing at Prairie View Golf Course in the state finals. While the team had less than stellar showings on Friday and Saturday, they still have plenty to be proud about. Seniors Core Zink, Lawrence Stewart, and McKenna Watson all turned in fantastic seasons, even though the outcome may not have been what they wanted. There's also junior Ella Bui, who likewise also turns in a fantastic season and looks to build upon it next year. The biggest surprise of the season, however, was the emergence of freshman Janelle Megan Garcia. As a freshman, she played varsity, a huge accomplishment. And at state finals, she's finished tied for 36, good for second on the HSC team. With Bowie and Garcia playing at a high level, HSC looks ready to compete once again for the state title next year.
However, seniors Lauren Stewart, McKenna Watson, and Core Zink set the standard for what Royals golf should be in the future. This has been Career SSN. soccer team had a great run in sectionals, defeating Anderson 8-0 in their first game, with six different players on the squad scoring goals. In their second matchup, they played Fishers in a rivalry rematch. They lost earlier in the year, but took the win in sectionals. They won 4-2, with Logan Pohl scoring three goals and being the player of the game. They then played Noblesville in the sectional championship and had a tough loss 3-0. They beat Noblesville earlier on in the year, but this time they just couldn't get it done. Earlier on in the sectionals, they looked like the top team in the state, defeating number three, Fishers, at their home stadium. But then they got upset by number five, Noblesville. Overall, it was a great year for the Royals, finishing 13-3-2. Hi, my name is Emma Biebrick with SSN, and we will be interviewing girls from the cross-country team about leadership and their experiences on the team. And I'm here with Greta Johnson, a senior on the cross country team. Greta, how has your role on the team changed since being a senior this year? Um, being a senior this year, I've really had to step up and be a good role model for all the underclassmen. And how have you been able to impact the underclassmen on the team? Um, just being me and the other seniors really try to be energetic and fun at practices so everybody else has fun as well. Okay, and what would your advice be for younger runners? Um, interact with the team, be friends with everybody, and just have fun. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Rose. I'm Alex White, and today I'm joined by? Olivia Dean. And you're a member of the cross-country team, correct? Yeah. What are some of your experiences like on the cross-country team? Um, I have really good experiences on the cross-country team with all the girls and the coaches and just everyone on the cross-country team. And what's your favorite part about being a member of the team? Um, honestly, just getting to run with all the girls and making like close friendships with them. And how have you in, been impacted by the seniors and the upperclassmen throughout your years? The seniors have been like really helpful and like willing to um, <laughs> help us, and they've just been so kind. And so like, I've just grown like a very big liking to them. Nice to hear. Years. Thank you. As you can see, leadership plays a huge part in the Royals on the cross country team this year as they wrap up another great season and look to keep that moving forward into next year. Thanks for watching Royals, I'm Alex White with Southeastern Sports Network. We're here to ask you a few questions today about your first year on this team. And my first one is, how is the season different with it being your freshman year? Um, there's like a lot of new schools that like come together. So there's a lot of new people and there's new coaches to impress. So I have to adjust and try to like impress them. Alrighty. And then my last question for you is, how have the upperclassmen influenced and helped you with this year and this season? Um, I think at the beginning I was like a bit scared and nervous of them, but then once I like got more into the season, I'm like really good friends with a lot of sophomores. So. Alrighty. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Annika Knopfmeyer, and I'm a varsity manager for the varsity volleyball team. Alright. So today we're here to ask you just a few questions about the season this year. Um, the first one is, would you recommend being any type of manager for the HSE sports in athletics? Um, I totally recommend it. I started off um, just playing volleyball for the school. I was on the freshman and JV team, but um, as soon as I became a manager for varsity as my junior year, I still felt like I could be involved with the school and be involved with the sport. And it's just a great atmosphere. You make a lot of friends. Um, you can be friends with the athletes and your other managers. Alrighty, and then my last question for you today is, how do you as a manager help make the volleyball team 
Um, I think that as a manager, I bring a lot of like responsibility to the team and um, just keep it running. Um, me and my fellow managers, we do a lot of work behind the scenes, whether it comes to like washing jerseys, keeping statistics, um, just making sure that the team runs smoothly. And I think that the players value us um, when it comes to remembering everything that they need for game day um, and just keeping them in line. All right, that's all we have for you today. Thank you.